It's come out that the Prime Minister met the former government chief whip, Andrew Mitchell, this Monday. The meeting came after a serving police officer was arrested in the investigation into the row between Mr Mitchell and officers at the Downing Street gate that ultimately led to his resignation from the government. Well, joining us now is our political correspondent, Sophie Ridge. Uh, Sophie, I'm a bit confused. The Prime Minister saw the CCT evidence, which cast considerable doubt on the police record of this confrontation uh, with Andrew Mitchell, and yet he still let Andrew Mitchell resign. Well, this is the really interesting um, thing that's emerged um, today. We know that um, Jeremy Hayward, the Cabinet Secretary, uh, who was tasked with running in the inquiry, the investigation into what happened with Andrew Mitchell, saw the CCTV footage, viewed it. He then passed it on to the Prime Minister, who also had a look. So they must have known that the CCTV simply did not tally up, firstly, with the email uh, that was sent uh, by the serving police officer who was pretending to be a witness, but also an aspect of the police lock. It didn't exactly tally up. But they decided not to do anything about it. David Cameron did, though, back Andrew Mitchell. He didn't want him to resign. He was standing by him until it got to a stage when it was felt that actually the chief whip, the former chief whip, had no choice but to step down. And I think the only conclusion that you can draw is that David Cameron simply didn't want to get into a row with the police. The relationship between the government and the police is already quite frosty at the moment, and also in particular with the diplomatic protection officers, who are the ones who guard him in uh, Downing Street. And uh, we're also hearing that uh, Andrew Mitchell is saying that he has no confidence in the head of the Metropolitan Police, Bernard Hogan Howe. I mean, has it really come to the situation that if uh, Mitchell is uh, re-exonerated, uh, then we're going to see yet another resignation of the head of the Met? Well, I've been speaking to sources close to the Prime Minister this morning who have said very strongly that David Cameron still has full confidence in the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, in um, Bernard Hogan Howe. Andrew Mitchell clearly is quite infuriated, perhaps, uh, with the way that uh, Mr Hogan Howe has dealt with uh, the um, investigation so far. He very publicly, of course, backed the two officers and the report that they made uh, at the gates of Downing Street after the incident, saying that he didn't think that anything had come to light, which really cast doubt on their account. Well, this position has now changed uh, considerably. They put out a very strong uh, statement about saying they're going to follow the evidence where it leads, they're going to look into the inquiry very carefully. And I think that probably will be enough uh, to keep uh, Bernard Hogan Howe in his job, although his relationship with Andrew Mitchell is clearly damaged, to say the least. Sophie, thank you. Well, uh, more on that now. Uh, we're joined by the former Metropolitan Police Officer Mike Pannett. He's in York. And joining me in the studio is Michael Brown, former Conservative MP and a friend uh, of Andrew Mitchell. And, and uh, Mr Pannett, you've read the police log because it was leaked in the papers. You've seen the CCTV and it looks as if the police fitted up Mr Mitchell, doesn't it? Uh, look, absolutely, in my view, no. What, what we had here, and let's go back to the real issue here, Adam, is when Mr Mitchell, the Chief Whip, had that altercation, and there's no doubting there's been an altercation at the gates of Number 10. Had he have, uh, said what I wish he had said at the time was he'd had a bad day at the office, and I'm sorry, what I, I should never have reacted in that way, that probably would have been an end to the matter. But, but the first mistake was obviously losing his temper, and the second mistake was then saying nothing about it. And then the biggest mistake, in my view, was coming out and saying, well, I did swear at the police, but I didn't say what they're saying I said. And still, you know, right through this, he never came out and said exactly what he did say. So, look, those two officers, and, and as you can see from the images, acted quite calmly. They're experienced police officers. Their job is to look after politicians. They were at the gate. They didn't overreact. They didn't jump in. There was people passing by that gate and, and in The Guardian there's various other reports of up to six, seven people walking past. But that aside, when those officers are being lambasted by the chief whip at the gate, they will have in their peripheral vision seen people passing by. But they will have been under great pressure because it's not every day you suddenly find yourself being a, a, abused like that. And those officers have gone off, Adam, they've made a report and have passed it to the scene, to, to, along to the management. And of course, you know, why should we be questioning this? And now what we're seeing, there's, there's a, a rogue officer, for goodness knows why, has, has 
lied or it's, it's obviously the suspicion is that's the case and that's all obviously got to be investigated but we can't detract away from what originally happened and, and this what's going on now with the government which are, is, is just horrendous. All right, well, let me put that to Michael Brown. I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, Mr Mitchell admits uh, he lost his temper, he admits he swore, so uh, why should we have any sympathy for him? Well, I'm afraid that uh, the facts don't bear out what we've just heard. I've got in front of me, and the whole nation read it in the newspaper, leave on one side how the 444-word uh, log got into the public uh, domain, but I've got the actual quote here from the, one of the police officers. There were several members of the public present as is the norm opposite the pedestrian gate. We know from the CCTV footage that that is a lie. Then we have, as we neared it, Mr Mitchell said, best you learn your F place, you don't run this F government, your F plebs. The members of the public looked visibly shocked. Now that is a downright lie, Adam, and that log, if it ever comes to court and there is a jury and a, a cross-examining barrister, it won't take Inspector Cluzo to arrive at the conclusion that if you can't believe two of those sentences in that paragraph, then I certainly believe when Andrew Mitchell tells me to my face in terms, and I've got the text on the day, the same day as this uh, statement from Andrew Mitchell, who I've known for 25 years, who served with me in the John Major Whip's office who says, uh, you know, of course, I'd never call someone a pleb or a moron, but I can't get into an arguing match with the police. OK, uh, Pan, I mean, lies is what Michael Brown's saying. Well, well, of course, Michael Brown will, will, will say that because, you know, we'll see Andrew the, Mitchell's we'll friends tape. now have probably got are spinning more things out than, than a waltzer and there's more muck being spread by the government. This is absolutely dreadful. No, got, and, and, of course, we've now we've got the, the chief whip going on an attack of the Metropolitan Police um, Commissioner who, who actually, you know, he's bringing into question the integrity of our entire police service. Goodness me, where is all this going? Look, the point being here, Adam, is... You know, and Andrew Mitchell admitted himself that he swore at those police officers when he left number 10. And is that acceptable? And I think the public have about had enough of, of what's gone on since. And quite rightly, there is going to be another investigation what that seemingly rogue officer said. But I've got no you doubt in the integrity of those two officers. And you, you, Andrew you, Mitchell questioned... Yeah, that. but hang on, wait a minute. You yourself just said that had Andrew Mitchell given a decent apology, you think that should have been the end of the affair... The police weren't satisfied Adam, with the apology, apology and it now looks as if they egged it to force him out and that the police federation were involved as well, doesn't it? Well, look, that's um, speculation about the federation being involved. They've absolutely come out and said they've got absolutely nothing to do with, with this whatsoever and that will all come out in the investigation. Goodness me, there's 30 officers working on this. Now, look, if, if Andrew Mitchell had come out and said, I'm sorry, I, 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 what I did was wrong, I shouldn't have said that. That, to me, probably would have been the end of it, but he didn't. He didn't give a full apology. He came out and he said, well, yes, I did swear at the police. Well, if that's all right, well... But he, but he went further. He went well, and then questioned felt, the integrity know, of those Because he genuinely officers, felt he no was being stitched that. up. Because he felt the reason why he didn't issue a full Look apology was because he, he knew he didn't say what he was alleged to have said, but he was in the difficult position of his word against Listen. the police officers. Of course you're going to be defending um, Andrew Mitchell, but look, it's Andrew Mitchell that, that left Downing Street, it's Andrew Mitchell that was abusive towards the police officers, and really, now it's all been turned round, and, and because of this ridiculous right, email that's gone in, here we have it, been, the whole thing's uh, been blown up. emails to the government, uh, that okay. man needs to be uh, arrested yeah. and charged. OK, Michael Brown, but Boris Johnson said anyone who swears that the police should be arrested, that... If he wasn't a cabinet minister, he believes Mitchell would have been arrested and that Mitchell should face the consequences of that. And by Andrew Mitchell's own admission, he it's swore at the police. Andrew Mitchell so has isn't never that just denied the end of the case. That, that, uh, Andrew Mitchell, no, it isn't, because Andrew Mitchell's reputation uh, has led to his resignation. Uh, 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 is it the cabinet resignation? minister who swears at the police. That is That's... unacceptable. I absolutely agree. But what is also unacceptable is for a police log to contain falsehoods. It is unacceptable for a policeman to purport to be a member of the general public and send a false email to the deputy chief whip, which is then passed to the prime minister, who uses that. To 
to weigh in the balance yeah. to the destruction of an, a, a, a cabinet minister's career. And by the way, we still need to know how this uh, log yeah. reached the public now, as domain. Now, as a former whip yourself, uh, do you now share Andrew Mitchell's lack of confidence or no confidence in the Commission of the Metropolitan Police? Well, you can't look at this. Uh, log and then look well, at the CCTV, and, it, then, he... and then look at the CCTV footage to see no members of the general public uh, around to wonder whether in the balance of probability who said what to who uh, you can't well, have confidence in the police I'm afraid and it's not surprising well, that Andrew Mitchell uh, is beginning to lose faith uh, in natural justice briefly, it has to where, be restored. where do you think this is going to end oh I hope it ends in court with with, with, with somebody going to jail well a policeman well, it's painfully obvious yeah. that one policeman okay. masquerading, uh, masquerading uh, uh, a member of the general public. Uh, uh, okay. If I masquerade, masquerade as a policeman, right. I would go to jail. And, uh, Mr Panett, where do you think this should end? I, t I tell you what, Adam, I think the, the entire policing service, the entire members of the public, uh, really want to see this brought to a conclusion swiftly, and I'm sure the Metropolitan Police will invest investigate this fully, then all the facts can come out. Mr Brown's jumping to a lot of conclusions there and saying there's no people walking past that gate. But the, the original thing comes back to this, is that the Chief Whip left footage, Downing like Street else. and abused those two police officers. They, it, can I just finish? abuse those two police officers. They didn't want that to happen. I'm sure those police officers didn't. And when they were being attacked in that way at the gate for no real apparent reason, all Andrew Mitchell could have done was apologise. It was unacceptable behaviour. He's made a number of grave errors. And now the entire... Um, his friends are coming out and throwing as much mud about the police service. This is dreadful. It's bad for policing. It's bad for politics. And it's about time somebody showed some real leadership and got this sorted out. And I'm talking about the Prime Minister here okay. because this is absolutely ridiculous. Mitchell's abused somebody in the first place. And now Th here th we thank are. you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank